Hello everybody, welcome to another video. My name is Infinity and today I am here with another Centro Knitting Machine tutorial. As you guys could tell by the title, I'm going to be showing you guys how to make tube socks. This is a community request. Um, I was asked to uh, how, show how to make socks on the Centro Knitting Machine without doing all the extra fancy work with the heel. Um, so I'm here with this tutorial today. Thank you for the suggestion. Always feel free to leave uh, comments like that. I like fulfilling community requests. Okay, without further ado, I'm I'm going to jump into the tutorial. Today's tube sock is going to be basically an ankle sock. This for me would come just slightly below my ankle with it folded down at the cuff or just slightly over it if it's like flat. So alright we're gonna jump into this tutorial. For today's video you're gonna want your Centro mini knitting machine. It's the 22 needle variation of the Centro. Um, you're gonna want a crochet hook. This one's about a four millimeter. Um, this is for crocheting the little cuff part. You're going to want a darning needle, tape measure, some scissors, and of course your yarn. Today I'll be using Patton's Croy Socks uh, FX again because I absolutely love this yarn. And if you uh, would like, I will leave my blog post down below with all my maker notes and uh, material lists so you can find that easily. Alright, so first we are going to make sure that our machine is in tube knitting mode. So it's clicked down to the T. Try to focus here. So as you guys can see, it's like down in the down position. Some machines might be a little different, but for me, T is down and P is up. So we're going to start here with the two knitting mode, and you won't have to switch modes for this sock method at all. So I'm going to take my double strand of sock yarn, and first I'm going to go crank around, make sure my black indicator needle is up, and then I'm going to go about casting on. If you need a more in-depth tutorial on how to cast on and do all that beginner stuff, I have a full playlist of Centro Knitting Machine tutorials back on my channel, so you're free to check that out. Well, I'm just going to slowly cast on, making sure every needle catches both strands of this yarn. It is a one-weight yarn, so if um, you're using a one-weight, it's best to double-strand it. Um, if you're using like a DK yarn, you might be able to get away with one strand. Just make sure you're paying attention to the weight of your yarn. Alright, I'm coming back around to that black indicator needle. I am going to just make sure that that needle catches my double strand. I'm going to pop my yarn into the threader and I'm going to slowly crank my rows just to make sure that every needle is catching my double strand of yarn. It's super important because you don't want to start dropping stitches. For my sample that I showed you guys in the beginning here, I cranked up eight and a half inches of um, fabric for this sock. So that's what I'm going to be doing again here. I think in my maker notes, I said that it was like 68 rows. So if you have a row counter on your machine, you know, you can crank all the way up to eight and a half rows. Otherwise, the handy tape measure, uh, you can use that to measure your fabric as you go along. So I'm going to keep cranking this out and I'll meet you guys back when I am ready to uh, cast off. Alright, so I am at eight and a half inches here. I have my handy little tape measure. I'm just gonna pull that out of there. Almost knitted it into my sock, but you know, it bees like that. So what I'm going to do is uh pull out a decent length for a tail, maybe about twelve to eighteen inches. And I'm going to just cut that and I'm gonna start casting off. Like I said, if you need a more in-depth demonstration on how to cast off and do other functions with this machine. I have an entire playlist back on my channel, but I am going to just uh, find my needle here. And we are going to start casting off this machine. It's a really quick process. Alright, so I'm going to unthread my machine. I'm going to make sure this black indicator needle catches the yarn. I'm going to hold it in the upward position and we're just going to crank a full row without yarn. 
and I'm going to stop just a few needles before I get back to that black indicator needle I've found over the years that it's a lot easier to cast off without losing stitches that way. So I'm going to start just looping off these stitches onto my cast off tail. Alright y'all, so I have cast it off and this is what my little blank looks like here. So what I'm going to do is actually turn this on the wrong side, so inside out, so that we can sew. And I always do that because sewing looks so much better when you do everything from the inside and weave in all your tails and stuff from the inside. Alright, so once I get it inside out, what I'm going to do is come down here from where we cast on. And I purposely didn't cast on with a slip knot because we are going to be cinching this toe kind of close, kind of not close. I try to straighten this out as much as possible. And then I just start to tug on the tail here to start closing up the bottom. Just a little bit, not all the way, um, even though you totally can. This is just shaping the toe of the sock. So this is about where I had it for the other sock. I don't close mine all the way because uh, I think the fabric bunches up at the bottom and it makes it really uncomfortable to wear the sock in the end. So that would defeat the whole purpose. <laughs> all right, and once you get this bottom cinched to where you want it, you're gonna thread your yarn needle onto your tails and you're just gonna go about sewing it close. You wanna make sure that the opening of this is totally flat and facing you so that when you turn this inside out you don't have these weird loopy stitches on the outside of your sock so I'm just gonna go about whip stitching this together you can use any stitch you like or you can even choose to slip stitch this close it's all about personal preference here Alright, now it's all closed off and secure and you can just weave your tails on back through there. You can either knot it in there or you can use a little dab of fray check. That's what I always do and it helps to keep my stitches nice and secure. I also ply through the yarn a little bit with my darning needle as I weave the end back in there. And the beauty of using wool yarn is that it clings really bad. <laughs> um, so taking this apart should be virtually imp impossible in the first place, but this just helps the security of your sewing job. Especially if you're like me and you're not necessarily a seamstress, you know. And once that's all done, you can just snip the yarn. And we can move on to the cuff of the sock. So now I'm coming up here to where the cuff is. And as I've mentioned in previous videos when it comes to this cuff, I like to kind of straighten it out just a little bit. And I do that by gently pulling on the tail that I uh, have from my cast off. Just to kind of uh, straighten up the initial stitches. And then I go about just loosely, um, I'm sorry, slowly loosening them up. Um, this is just to kind of help you to be able to fit the sock on the foot without struggling, basically. And it also helps your project to look nice and neat and uniform, just like it does on my other sock here, as you guys can see. You can see a little bit where I started crocheting the cuff, but it's really not that big of a deal. So that's my same goal for this. Just gonna loosen this up a wee bit. All right, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this tail to use. So I'm seeing where it's coming from on my project. I'm going to grab my crochet hook here, and I'm going to insert my hook into that stitch. I'm going to yarn over, pull up a loop, and chain one. 
and this is going to secure it. Now I don't have to worry about the project unraveling at any point. I'm going to place a single crochet into that stitch. Now what I did for the other sock is that I crocheted not only in these actual stitches but between them. Um, and that helps to give you a little more stretch around the opening of the sock for a easier fit. So just go about placing single crochets. So you should have about 44 single crochets around the top of the sock, more or less. It just depends on how many stitches you put in there, what kind of effect you're going for. For this sock, I wanted something really simple. Now, if you wanted a sock that was longer, like an actual tube sock, then you would just crank, um, you would crank out more rows of fabric. Alright, I've come full circle and so now I'm back to where I placed my first single crochet and I'm just going to slip stitch into that. So at this point, you know, you could be done, you could chain one and bind off if you'd like. What I did for my other sock is I uh, actually did a whole other row of single crochet all the way around just to give it a little, uh, I guess, substance around the cuff, you know. Um, but you could totally leave it plain or you could move into other stitches. I know for the original pair of socks that I made for the other sock tutorial, I did a front book back post for that and, um, it worked out just fine. Oops. Make sure we're just doing single crochets here. Alright, and so now I'm just making my last couple of single crochets. And I'm going to slip stitch in the top of that single crochet from the beginning of the row. I'm going to chain one and I'm just going to uh, bind off. So you'll notice that this whole time I've been working on the inside of the sock. Again, like I said, it makes it look a lot neater from the outside. Let me see if I can zoom out just a little bit. But this is what the whole sock looks like at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and sew in this end here as well as uh, this right here where I connected my yarns again. Just gonna do that right there. Add a little fray check there. And for this one, I am just going to knot it really, really good. Because when that fray check dries, it's going to uh, harden up a little bit and it's never going to come apart. So I can just kind of snip this right at the base of that knot. And this one as well. the last one. All right, and now we can flip this sock on the right side and see how it looks. Okay. And this is what your sock should look like. Um, if you made the short ankle sock like I did, this is what it looks like before it goes on a foot type thing, and then this is what it looks like on the sock blocker. Um, so what you could do if you don't like how the cuff curls up on you naturally, and yes, it's supposed to do that. If you don't like that, you can always uh, pin them down on some blocking mats and block them. <laughs> or you can leave them like this. These make good uh, like footies for like when you're in bed or just walking around the house chilling, living your best life. All right, and this is how you make socks on the mini central knitting machine without the heel um like i said i made a video for that so if you want to check out that more advanced method you can find that back on my channel under my central knitting machine playlist if you don't like the natural curl of this sock you can of course block them no big deal don't forget to leave me a comment down below leave this video a nice thumbs up subscribe and hit that notification bell because it helps more crafties to see the wonderful content that i put out um you can find my maker notes and material lists over on my blog so if you haven't signed up for the newsletter over there yet uh to get notified when those notes go live go over there and do that it helps me out 
just as much <laughs> um you can check me out on instagram i post all kinds of behind the scenes stuff as well as uh, my project whips and finished objects and things that i put in my handmade shop uh and as well as pattern releases guys so <laughs> yeah there's a lot of content over there for you and until next time happy making